Hello, this is Microprose back here once again, or SM Files for short, and I'm basically going to be showing you guys how to use land claims. So, first off, when you spawn into any server, it's not already set, you should automatically spawn with a golden shovel and a how to claim land book, um, as these are the base requirements to be able to use uh, the land claim. So, with the shovel being the tool and the book being basically the guide. So. It just gives you a few useful commands, um, however, in the description there will be a full link to all commands with explanations for what each one does. These are just some of the more important ones that you will begin uh, to learn further on. So first off, let's just go ahead and start. We're going to go ahead and protect a claim. Um, you'll notice right there it says I have 881,058 more blocks. Um, now for, like when you ba like when you start off on the server, um, the base amount is 100, um, 100 blocks. That means you can claim a 10 by 10 area, or you can claim like a 2 by 50 area, something like that. I don't really think you would do that. You'd probably just do it the 10 by 10. So, anyways, first you need to right click on the corner that you are selecting. This will set a diamond block. You can't actually mine it or anything. Don't try it. Um, it'll set a diamond block as just like a corner piece. So let's say I wanted. You need to go to the obviously you need to go to the opposite corner. So. Um, since I've got like a ton of blocks, I'm just going to set a spot and then you're just going to right click in the opposite corner. So you'll notice I clicked there, that created the diamond, and then right here, also uh, in the next corner, the opposite corner, it completed it. Now let's say I'm playing a little bit and like a few hours go by and I get some more blocks, so I'm able to extend out in one direction or whatever. So let's say I get enough blocks to extend out in this direction four times because I'm trying to make like a town or something. So I'm just going to right click on the corner and just go out by four blocks. So I need to do that. So I'm just going to click on the corner and I'm just going to click on the new spot where it's going to resize. You'll notice that it's just grown by four blocks. Now, if we wanted to bring it out this way, you know, you're just going to right click, go any way. You have to make sure you have the required amount of blocks. Or let's say I'm actually moving, but I need a few blocks to just protect a few chests. So I'm going to actually right click, and I can move in this way, this way, I can move in completely diagonally, and then I click, and then it's a new space. So it's very useful whenever you're, when it comes to protecting claims. Now within this claim, basically people without access to trust or anything like that, they will not be able to do anything within the claim. Now let's say that I placed a block of diamond right here and someone ran up to it. They wouldn't be able to break it because it's my claim. But if I placed something out here, they would be able to take it because it's not within my claim boundaries. So you need to make sure if when you're building or whatever that you take out your shovel, it'll show you exactly where your claim boundaries are so you know that you won't be overlapping anything uh, to make sure that nothing gets taken or stolen or destroyed or anything like that. As well as TNT is also disabled within the claim, um, but you can simply just do slash. Um, you can just you know you can just do the basic command. Uh, I actually think it's in here. Um, like I said, a full list will be in there, but you can actually enable TNT. I believe it's just um, slash claim explosion, something like that, and then it allows you to use TNT and such, as well as uh, fire spread is also disabled within the claim, um, so basically if I was in here, someone couldn't try to grief by, like it's basically anti-grief, but it's grief protection basically, so you have the claim, nothing within the claim can be touched by anybody at any given moment unless it's an admin in which he can overrule um, your jurisdiction there and he can take it from you. You also notice that these will disappear, that's just because after a certain amount of time they will disappear. Now let's say I was looking out, and then I took out the block, so I'm just trying to you know, find a spot to refresh. It will most likely not show these blocks here. Um, as well as if I was, I, I was like another player, you know, I ran up, it wouldn't show these blocks because it's not my claim. So, another good spot, let's say that we had a pretty decently sized claim, so let's just expand this a little bit. So. We're just gonna, oops. See, oh, so if you want, if you accidentally mess up and you want to cancel, um, you just take out and you just go to another slot and then you bring it back and it's gonna refresh. 
So we need to step inside the claim and it's going to refresh once it loads. So once again, we're going to click on this. And we're going to take it probably like this way and then we're going to turn down this way and then we're going to resize it. So now let's say that we wanted to set up an area for people to have access to the area, but we don't want to give them access to the entire area. So example, let's say that we're going to be making a town and uh, I don't know, in this area, this, like in, let's say in this spot, this is like a tower or something, and someone offers to build it for you, but you don't really know if you can like grief it or something. So you're going to take out your, t your, t uh, shul, your tool or your shovel and you're just going to do sub divide claims. What this is going to do is this is going to um, put it into subdivide mode so you're going to actually be able to highlight certain areas within your plot and make it open to people. So, um, so let's say that we wanted to go back to just like the standard area because we want to expand or whatever. You're just going to do slash basic claims and I'll put it back to the basic spot. So now we're just going to right click. It's going to say subdivision corner set where you're going to go to the opposite corner. And now you're going to see it's outlined by white wool and then iron as the marker. So basically what this means is if I'm standing in here and I'm, let's just say I wanted to trust the owner. Yeah, um, the person that you're trusting has to be on, by the way. So anyways, let's just, so trust, doing slash trust, their name. Obviously it's going to say that the name isn't on. So let's say I did slash trust blazon the noob 3k because that's the owner's name. So he now has permission to build within this claim. But what if I wanted to take away his trust? I would just do untrust blazon the noob. Okay, it, he's now been revoked access. So that means that if he was building something here and he finishes, I'll just revoke his access so he can't do it. Now let's say that we also wanted to subdivide. By the way, whenever you put the shovel away, it takes it out of subdivide claims mode, so you need to make sure you need to desperately make sure that you if you accidentally scroll away that you have to reset it. I would just recommend if you're gonna be doing subdividing and sometimes you have to cancel, just copy and pasting. Just basically just do this. Sub divide claims, copy and paste, and then just exit out of that sub so whenever you copy and paste it, not going to put the slash there so it won't be like a slash slash. So let's say we wanted to set up a small plot because we wanted to have someone renting the land. So we're going to go somewhere and then pick the opposite corner. And then now we have this spot. But let's say we wanted him to just be able to build on it. We just do slash trust or whatever. But by going in here, let's say that we wanted to um, ignore him, meaning that he... Meaning that if you ignore the player, this means that they don't actually, they can build within your boundaries, they can they can basically grief you if they really want it. Um, they're ignored. They can walk through your boundary, they can build, they can destroy, they can do anything. That's what ignore means, basically. Um, now, the access trust. Access trust just gives them access to be able to use doors, um, beds, and like levers and buttons and stuff. Container trust. So let's say that I got a chest and you know like a furnace and let's say I put like a ton of oops, let's say I put like a ton of diamonds and see and also whenever you're um, building outside of the boundary it'll tell you that it's not protected so that's actually very good um, so anyways we're just gonna go ahead and put this in here and let's say we, we like let's say we go like, to a house or something right here we will only wanted him to have access to be able to use like just the inside stuff so you know the bed the levers the doors um, the the furnaces the chests the crafting table all that stuff the anvil so we're just going to take out the shovel again and we're going to do slash container trust the person's name and now they only have access to be able to open up stuff and use things. They can't build or anything like that. So, oops, we're gonna go back in here. And let's say we wanted them to get permission trust. Basically, permission trust is where you give them basically, um, I'm pretty sure permission trust is basically you give them permission to do a certain thing. So let's say that you give them permission trust to build or something. Then you, that's what you would do that for. I'm pretty sure that's what that's for. I've never had to use it because um, for the most part, I've been um, pretty strict with how I like let people build and stuff 
Um, so let's say we wanted to extend our claim. Uh, instead of actually doing this, you can do the command, or you can simply just, once again, right click and bring it to a new spot if you want. So, going back to the book, there's even more commands. These are just like the useful ones, but there's a ton more commands. Um, like, you can turn off explosions, like fire spread, that kind of stuff. You can do all of that. But let's say that we wanted, we didn't want this claim anymore, so we wanted to abandon everything, including all the subclaims and stuff. So, we're going to just plant ourselves on it, take out this shovel, we're going to do slash aban, oops, abandon claim. And it's going to abandon it. You're and something that people. Um, oh, so in order to delete all the subdivisions, I actually almost forgot. You need to do the slash abandon top level claim, and basically this just takes away all claims. Um, and something that people always ask is, do you get your blocks back whenever you abandon the entire claim or like a certain spot of the claim? And yes, that is true. You do get all blocks back that you use to build it. Um, now, let's say that you wanted to um, just create like a subclaim. Uh, oh yeah, it needs to be at least a hundred. You need to use at least a hundred blocks, so it needs to be at least a ten by ten. If it's anything lower, then they're going. Then the add-on will assume that you're trying to mend or something to create like a tower or whatever. So they're going. You need. It needs to be at least ten by ten. That's a hundred. You start off with ten by ten. So, yeah. So, anyways, so let's just say that we wanted to um, just subdivide the claims again. So, we're just gonna, I don't know, just pick a nice little spot or whatever. But let's say that, oh no, we messed up and we set it over too much. We can actually resize the claim. As you see, we can resize the subclaim. But let's say we didn't even want the claim. We can just do abandon. Oops. Abandon claim. And this was specifically only so whenever we refresh, it'll bring up everything else except for that claim that you um, that you abandoned. Now the reason why you need to um, do abandon top level claim to delete everything is to make sure that none of the like nothing is left. But if you wanted to just take away one claim, you just stand within the zone, then you take it out. So once again, abandon claim, and this will take out everything, right? Now, if you have, um, so you have to do top level claim every time, no matter what, even if you don't have subdivisions. Um, it's just to make sure that you really want to. Because, like, let's say it's late at night and you're, and you're really tired and you accidentally mess up, it's going to catch that for the most part and it's going to tell you that you messed up. So, I'm just going to give you a, for, a few examples. So, example, if we go to Germania. This is probably the biggest example. So the entire everything it's so gigantic that it can't load all the like the entire claim. The the entire claim is gigantic. It's using like over I would say a million no, um like a few hundred thousand blocks to claim. But like examples down here, you'll notice these spots, this is a subclaim for people to get access. Each and every single one of these little houses is a subclaim. Um, if you, we take this out, you'll notice all these areas are subclaims, but when you give someone access, you would stand inside this and give them trust access, since this is like a claim that they can get to build on, and stuff like that, but also remain safe within the town. Um, this is just an example over here. So I basically gave him trust access for this specific area, and he is only able to build within the boundaries of the subclaim. He can't build on the road. He can't build on someone else's plot. He can't build on anything else but the area he's assigned to. Now, if I stood out like on the road and trusted him, that means he would get access to be able to do anything within the claim. So he could build it. He could um, disable TNT and blow it up if he wanted. He could grief it all. He could do anything that he wanted um, to the claim. So you would probably only trust extremely uh, trustworthy members to do that. Um, so like even if they say that they're going to just build you something, just make a subclaim around the area where they would be building and make sure that everything stays safe. I hope this helped you guys um, a little bit with finding a claim. Remember you won't have anywhere the magnitude of blocks that I have for claim for the claim for the land claim add-on. I just give myself this as I'm in uh, I'm in staff member on the server and I build basically all of this type of stuff, I build the ships, all that stuff, so I have to have a lot of claim blocks to be able to protect the areas that I'm building in. So, 
Anyways, I hope this um, helped you. Also, um, if you're like an owner of a server, you can use this. Um, as w and um, you're able to use this as well as World Guard. You can use them together. Example, this area. There's no PvP allowed or anything like that. It's all been disabled within the World Guard feature. Um, another thing, like let's say that you're an owner and you wanted to use land claim to actually claim. Let's say that you built a hub. So we're just going to do slash warp hub over here. This is basically um, the hub that we started building. So let's say that you wanted to claim the entire hub to make sure that no one could build on it. You could claim the entire hub um, for so that way no one could build. And also when you claim, when you make a claim, so example, I couldn't go over here, but when you make a claim, the claim expands all the way within the boundaries. It expands all the way to the um, to like the highest level of the sky and all the way down to bedrock. So this basically makes sure no one can like dig under your base and then screw it up or they can't um, attempt to touch it or anything like that. So it's just a really nice area. Um, so I'll be showing you guys how to use World Guard. Uh, like I said, I hope this helped you, users and staff members, um, on how to properly use World Guard. Um, so yeah, I will see you guys later. This is SF House or Microfos Gaming. Out.